gentlemen, how, how are you enjoying the sunshine and Wales Comic Con? Yes, yes, good. Very, very good. good. I feel like we're, you're just saying, I feel like we're doing a university lecture or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, the PowerPoint I, presentation will start shortly. I am a university lecturer, so oh, yeah. it's fantastic. We'll do it on the doc. We can have the, the, the sort of doctor's interview. But earlier on, I was just looking for you gentlemen. You won't be aware of this. And uh, I said, has any, anybody seen the boys? Because I, I just want to do a, a quick sort of uh, preamble through some of the questions, which we never got to do. And uh, they said, yeah, you'll, you'll find them. They're really easy to find. They, they all look good enough to lick. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the description I was given. Uh, I, I should add, from a, a lady. Uh, so, I don't know how much of a lady she was giving me that description, but there we go. So, uh, Sorry, I'm just going to work out. <laughs> you stay down. <laughs> I've never felt so small in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I should stand up, maybe, or get a cushion. Or... No, really. That's what I was Yeah, I mean, look at this. My stepladder's in the car. Oh, my <laughs> goodness me. I don't know, so there we go. So listen, we've got so many people here today. Normally we do a sort of little chit-chat at the start and warm things up. We're, we literally have you for 30 minutes, and it would be selfish of me not to put the questions straight out. So are there any questions straight away? Let's get this party started. There we go. The dragon. <laughs> Gaius. Why? Uh, Agravain. <laughs> really? So <laughs> not Peculiar choice. We got a hand at yes, you there, yes. Why do you ask that to Me. <laughs> There's only one way to decide this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who, who is the best fighter? Who do you reckon is the best fighter? <laughs> Your question. Um, Leon wore a dress at some point. Did the did police ever find out about that? And if they did, did they ever let Leon live it down? I asked if I could borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were very ahead of its time, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, there was a club in Camelot. Uh, <laughs> right, that's not many people knew about. It. It's a story that it has continued because then obviously Leon marries Gwen that we don't know, but of a weekend, and she encouraged us. <laughs> as you know from the episode. So I think um, I don't know if the knights ever found out, but I think first of all we'd be easily convinced to <laughs> slip into a nice little sleeveless number. Yeah. 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 Now we know why you said the dragon as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> your favourite scene to film and what is your favourite scene in the series overall? You knew that would be asked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my favourite was the Dark Tower episode. We couldn't ever get through the scene because we actually found the writing so funny to act um, uh, for dark. the wrong reasons. Um, <laughs> the Dark Tower. The dark tower. Um, <laughs> It's a tower that's so dark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, me and, me and Leon wake up from a dream. And, and, and Gwen as well. And then Gwen as well. It is about Custer or something mm. like that. Yeah. We, and our dreams were like we remembered the same words. It was literally it was the way it was written. Because normally you wake up and go, oh, I had a dream about this tower. And he goes, oh my god, I had a dream about the tower. And and it was and it went. But it was like, so we would do it. It was written like it was one person's dialogue. It was split. So it'd be like, I had a dream. It was a. Dark tower, tower. <laughs> and all the words were um, exactly the same. That was, but that was kind of funny. That was a, a fun scene to shoot. It was most memorable, I think. I think for me, the the there was a few. The the troll episode, which was one of the first times I had fun. <laughs> that was very funny. And any time those the prosthetics were amazing. But I think in terms of the moment that I'll always remember is when all the knights kind of got together and we were in France and we were all on horses with our. Uh, no, I've said this before, but in our uh, capes and we were 
riding into the castle in France, and a lot of probably a lot of you here, were, a lot of fans were there, and a lot of kids were what, going, "Oh my God, this is so cool!" And we were like, "I oh, know, it's really." Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you're suddenly, it's, it's not there. Genuinely, there's nothing cooler than with some people you love, and you're on a horse, pretend to be a knight, and riding a horse with a sword and going to a castle, and it's it was just epic. And so I think for me, yeah, that was very cool. Those folks yeah. walking in slow motion. And oh, no, then they added that. They added yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine was uh, just the dolma. Colin, Colin in a Colin in a in a buxom bra and <laughs> that voice. That was the it's thing you were. <laughs> Set it down by the lake. <laughs> just blew my mind. Really, I was al I was always in awe of Colin, but then he, he topped it. Then. <laughs> yeah, I it, yeah. Was that Friday night as well? Yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. Every yeah. Friday night in Cardiff. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Let's get, yes, another question. How much of your own stunt work did you do? Did any of you get injured? Hmm. Uh, we all did our own, didn't we? Yeah. I think. Yeah, pretty much. There's a couple of. Own. We had amazing stunt guys who did uh, some of the, some wild, of the right? falls off horses. Um, did anyone get hurt? It was mostly it was things that accidentally happened, like when we weren't from and I walk into doors. Or <laughs> <laughs> I got thrown by my horse uh, oh, yeah. in puzzle. Oh, no, I can't remember. That was well somewhere. Um, uh, I think being me and being the, the silly <coughs> joker that I am, I was on my horse and half getting on, and she bolted. And everyone went, oh, this is hilarious, it's Rupert. And I went, look, let's look at him. And I'm going like this. <laughs> half on, and I throw, I, I, I fell off and uh, landed on this huge fence. Actually, it's really close to being pretty lethal. Uh, but, like, smashed into this fence. And luckily, the chainmail genuinely saved me from breaking anything. But I kind of woke up and had stars, and they were going, it's Rupert, all right, is it? And I was looking around, going, what's wrong? Ended up having to go to hospital. Um, which was hilarious when you're going into a hospital uh, near Cardiff dressed as a knight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an assistant director with an earpiece, because obviously they have them on set. So everyone's going, this guy's dressed like a lunatic and he seems to have a bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the chamber came off and I had this uh, photos of me in hospital with these like, bruises all over my chest. And, um, uh, uh, which, no, they're not here. Um, and yeah, and then came back and said, okay, I can get back. And then I don't remember if we filmed the scenes, but someone else said your lines. So that was really nice. Well, I almost died, and they had um, someone else doing it. But anyway, it turned out that the horse was actually pregnant that no one knew, so that's why she was a bit feisty and had a little foal. And so I found out the foals had just had a foal, apparently. So wow. I'm like, ground <laughs> Anyway, so that's long-winded. Just, yes? What's the funniest thing that's happened on set to you guys? What do you remember? Funniest thing. <laughs> Owen Mackin. Yeah. <laughs> Which one is it? Which one is it? The funniest thing that happened. We used to laugh a <laughs> lot. Yeah, that's the thing. We, we laughed every single day. I always used to say, like, it was. N it never, ever, ever felt like work because every day you go on the set, you would end up laughing a lot. For whatever reason, probably for the wrong reasons. <laughs> um, it would be working with Nat Parker, who, again, I think we all love, but he, he was not great at remembering lines. So he'd always stumble, even when he knew it. That and was that would make me, it's on a blooper reel somewhere that was just crying with laughter. And normally I would do the same. Whenever it was filming me, I would get my lines right. But when it was on someone else, I'd always forget my lines and I'd feel really bad. And I'd go, I, I've got to carry on because it's about their shot. <laughs> And so I just make up stuff, and the stuff that came out of my mouth without thinking was just so random. So, yeah, that was, it was kind of little things like that that made us laugh, as opposed to something we all went, I know, let's all jump out and scare the hell out of someone. But, yeah. how, how much of the ad lib stuff was kept in as well? None of it. None of it. <laughs> they were pretty brutal were, with yeah. putting yeah. our ad lib. Yeah. 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 None of that allowed. Okay, let's go for another. Oh, uh, oh, just at the back, just, just quick. I'll, I'll continue. Yes, yes. Oh, um, just, oh, there's a blooper of you in Dubai if you wait when you die. Yes. <laughs> what are your opinions on it? What are my opinions on it? Yes. <laughs> it was oh, a magical sure. moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
both remember it fondly. <laughs> uh, no, I, I um, it was going towards the end of the day that day, and then I, I said to the AD, I said, can I try and kiss him? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that was that, the rest is history. I'm very, very happy. <laughs> We were all, we were all Mac and Nick Lowe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we were all given our cloaks. We were all given our cloaks. Uh, and and, 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 and chainmail. Chain yeah. I didn't um, keep the chainmail. I've got heavy. my cuffs as well. Mac and ended up literally like <laughs> raving the set. He, he went, like, went into Guy's office and he, he just pitched the loads of like things. <laughs> <laughs> he came up with he had bags of vials with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the train back like, from like, London to London. Like a bog London. standard thief. He yeah. <laughs> 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 actually put like a sword or something yeah, down his yeah, trousers yeah. and it was like, <laughs> like, dude, look, I've got a sword. I've got a sword. Show me it. But you'd also have him going, oh, I don't know. Look at all the stuff I've got, and you'd be like, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, this load! <laughs> we were going to do series six, and then they didn't have any props. <laughs> so I'm probably too soon. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> what is this? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who do you think was more in love, Arthur and Gwen, or Arthur and Merlin? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably Merlin, because I mean, Gwen was quite fickle, you know, with the Lancelot love, and obviously the Leon yeah. love in series six. Yeah, I, I, would, I mean, that's, I think, why the show worked, the relationship between the two of them, and make of that yeah. what you will. It's just like the, the love of two people. <laughs> two, two, two they couldn't live boy. without each other. I think they, he could live without Gwen. Two sides the same. <laughs> okay. After knowing for uh, Merlin for so long, do you really think Leon was that clueless when he was controlled by the what was it? The, the snake in the back of his neck from my bar. The kill crazy Merlin. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. I haven't seen that episode for a while. I think. No, I remember that and going, I'm going to kill Arthur. Yeah, that's funny. I think, no, I think, I think that what worked well about that show, uh, what about the show was that moments like that were, it's the last thing you expect, you know, Leon, uh, there are jokes between people. So I think in that moment, I love doing that scene. I know, again, it's quite a small scene, but it's just really funny. So I think in hindsight, you know, if, if someone had filmed it in Camelot days and went, look what he did, I go, oh, remember that, it looked like a joke. I think Leon, who was very good at many things, just assumed it was, knows that Arthur treated him badly. Yeah. And so, I, I wouldn't, I think Clueless is maybe the wrong word, but I think it, it, he just assumed it was a joke, because Merlin was the best manservant you could get. Maybe it's from Arthur's dramatic irony. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I need to watch it again, I haven't seen it for a while, but <laughs> maybe I was just Clueless. All along. <laughs> Do, do you think this one he prime candidate like this this gentleman here? Oh, yeah. Little man. There we go. Just little laugh, oh, yeah. I'm just afraid you may explode. <laughs> <laughs> So do we. We, we, 
I have to admit, we never called it guapple. <laughs> but we, we did notice the, the constant relationship between Gwen and an apple. You would be able to get them from anywhere. You'd be yeah. at the top of a mountain, like, in the middle of nowhere, nowhere in the set, and you'd be like, where did you get that? And it'd always be when you're doing some scene, you'd hear this crunch, and it'd always be... And it would always like, come from a pile, so you go, eh, a pile of apples over there. Yeah. <laughs> Where? Is he having the same but does he eat apples on that? Yeah, he I does, assume does so, he's he? always having an apple. That's his thing. That's his Actor thing. studio would be talking yeah. about his apples. I always like to have an apple. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you might get asked this a lot, but it really bugs me. Right, in season one, Arthur helps Mordred escape, oh God. and knows he's been watching. Different Mordred. Give <laughs> 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 you an answer. Different Mordred. Ace of Butterfield. If you wish he was here, to answer his questions. Swine, <laughs> leaving me all the crap. Swanning off to Hollywood. Oh. <laughs> time shooting this show so like you'd never say never on, on trying to get any you know of any of us back together yeah. to do it again in some way shape or form um, but us as actors you know we're not the ones in control of that so it's, it's up to producers and stuff who want to, to and the creatives who want to make that happen um, if if someone came to me and said you can work with all these boys again I go 100% yeah. let's do it tomorrow so that's what that's what I think of. <laughs> There's also something that takes a long time. I think you get a bit of, uh, when you go to drama school or when you work with a group of people that you know inside and out. So you know uh, how they work and how you work with them that is invaluable. And you know, when you go and do a play or a TV show and you turn up and you film for three months or uh, a day or whatever it is, you don't, you, you, you're so kind of, like any job or first day of school or anything, you're going, as long as I don't take any, risk too big a risk or anything but when you're working with people you know inside and out one you have a dialogue that you you just can't fake which as actors you try and fake you try and get to know each other as quickly as possible yeah. but over the years there's, you just can't beat that and and you know how each person works you trust people and so to get the opportunity to work with any of them uh, any of the cast again would you, you would jump at it and and i think that's where we have been lucky that we and the reason we've all stayed in touch and even if we don't see each other for a year or two because of work we it's just so lovely for these conventions one to see you guys and how much the show still means to people and for us you know on a selfish level it's amazing for yeah. us to see you and for us to see okay. each other and it yeah. doesn't ever it's never awkward for a bit you know it's, we're straight back to how it was we don't even go oh my god it's great to see you it's like hey how you doing great how are you? <laughs> <laughs> it is it's, uh, it's, it's I, I'm, I'm like that <laughs> 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 he wasn't yesterday at Chester Station that's what <laughs> there you were that was there I was, I was jumping for joy to see you actually <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
So there's like a whole fan written script for season six out there and whether you guys have seen it or not, um, it's basically the story of how Arthur rises again in the new times and it's really great. And I was wondering, basically they have to fight a battle with different outcomes and different relationships, but, um, and I was wondering if that happened, what would you guys like to see happen to your characters? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be nice, it'd be nice to be in it, you know. Well, I, I, well, I can tell you, Mordred's in it. It's basically it's the same battle, just different outcomes and different um, relationships going on. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I like to think that, like, because we survived. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel like we'd be running like some biker bar. <laughs> and I'm wearing like my sleeveless yeah. tunic. Biker bar? Uh, yeah. Two of these and Harleys. Just like, <laughs> that's a blast. Dress. He'd be in his dress. I'd take that and I'd borrow it. <laughs> some, some weird biker bar. Just <laughs> <laughs> two guys in a dress. It's really yeah. hard. Yeah. What would you like to happen to all of us? Well, I've read the script, so I know what so happens you know to your happens? characters. Um, do we die or are we, are we alive? Uh, no, 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 Alex no. is not going to like the answer. <laughs> um, I think Mordred would like run a circus or something. <laughs> and just so he could do his little magic stuff and, and tease people. Like, like, like a modern day oh, like, like, a, like, like, like David Blaine or Darren Brown. He'd like, yeah. be like hosting like, like things like that in theatres. There you go. I'll, Oh, Thank you. Cool, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, the white cat. Oh, bubble, cat bodies. I love it, I noticed it. <laughs> and yeah, this is that Rupert is actually. The stage four. He actually has won the Bagger Gymnastics Award. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? Six. <laughs> <laughs> I could do a roly poly. <laughs> <laughs> In one of the scenes when, when Arthur was, was dying, I mean, Gwen kissed, and, we, and that didn't make the blooper us. <laughs> we were like, should we do that? And it was like, I think they thought we'll save that to series six. But I know, we thought, oh, this would be really funny, and kissed, and then went, oh, and then it, was, it was quite awkward. Take your moments I mean, I probably should have done it in a dressing room, but. <laughs> <laughs> joke. <laughs> Last dance, it was a really weird last oh, few it? weeks. It was a really because you, yeah, you just have this weird thing knowing that this thing that's part of your life is about to finish. Mm. So there's a weird thing you can't, <laughs> you can't even. It's never like the last night. It's not like we all go out or the get together. The rap Love parties are always weird because yeah. everyone is going and. But there's a really weird tension you can't really describe. And also, people people rap different times, didn't they? So yeah. Katie like rapped like a week before the actual last day of filming. So then they brought Katie back and stuff. Remember that? It's just like people. You never. It's not like everyone's That's doing true, a scene yeah. together and it's the last scene together. That never works out because it's a schedule. It's a TV show. They're not. They're not there for trying to get you know to, to make it a really happy mm -hmm. ending and wrap it all up in a bow. It's, it's, they're still filming a TV show. So people people finish at different times during yeah. the day. I mean, we all at lunchtime. We all got. We're like a group photo together with the crew mm. and stuff like that, and you all sort of in chain mail sort of like a sort of awkward class photo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, but then, and then we all packed up our stuff and we nicked loads of props and we got on the train. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I think because we always finished it up to every year we had that day, but there was always thinking it was coming. We, we know we were coming back, so it's a bit like I think again when you leave school, you go, so you have that feeling of going, oh, it's the end, but oh, it's after the summer holidays, that's when it will hit you, that you're not going back. So Cardiff was this place that you always went back to in, in March, and so you <coughs> finished in October and went back in March, and, and then it started to kind of, you realised it wasn't happening, and that's why, again, we got to meet up a lot, but it was a very special day and a special time, but that, you, that it wasn't like one moment of going, oh, let's all cry, and... And even that day, we went to our rap parties in London in two weeks' time, or in a week's time. Yeah. So everyone then met up there, and it was kind of... And, you, and then like the rap parties, people never really say goodbye to each other anyway there, because mm. everyone sort of drifts off at different times of the night. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, uh, not, it's not a, f a finale moment to it. So. No. Okay. 
We've got time for one more question, and you were you your hand went up straight away there. It's the rocket. It better be good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, no pressure at all on you. Um, so for Arthur, his legacy is when England is in its greatest need, he will rise again. If you could describe your legacy for your character in a line, <laughs> is that good enough? <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry if I said <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to do my best quote. Then, um, I can't even remember. We're going to stress. The stress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is one of those ones that tomorrow you go, oh, I've got it. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow. What was it after? No, I mean, the day after. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to. You, someone will know, but is it, is it love is more important than the power we wield? Is that, is that Mordred's quote from that? From, is, is that one? God, it's quite profound, yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love is more important than the power we wield? Yeah. There you go, yeah. that's my legacy. Done. Over to you, boys. <laughs> Albion's need is great, as Arthur will rise again. Yeah. yeah. But did he say that? <laughs> no, I think that's just like his legend. So, yeah, that's what we hear about. Oh, don't worry, we know that's going to happen. But is that his? If you were to ask Arthur, you wouldn't go, well, my legacy <laughs> is one down. Are you just trying to get out, out of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my legacy is, I, I always think, what I've, what's Leon left behind? And I think uh, being, being loyal and uh, kind and, and, and making sure everyone works towards a, a, a brilliant future, which is a great legacy, I think, to have. <laughs> <laughs> Some might say more profound than Arthur's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Percival. <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> Whose sleeves, <laughs> whose sleeves were always a work in progress. Friday night, uh, drag nights, <laughs> 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 profound. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, please. <laughs>